Good evening and welcome everyone to the, to the Cooper Associates County Ground for another one of our events that we're doing this winter. Um, my name's Ben Warren and we've got another packed programme for you here um, this evening. Um, importantly, we've got some key updates from Chief Executive Gordon Hollins as he does a live Q&A with Spencer Bishop and we're hoping um, to get Marcus Truscothic live from South Africa um, on a Zoom call, which, uh, so that's plenty of things to, to come up throughout the next sort of about half an hour, 45 minutes here um, as we come live from Taunton. Um, so without further ado, um, we're going to get straight into it and we're going to cross over to, to Gordon Hollins and Spencer Bishop who are um, over in the next room. Spencer. Well, thank you very much indeed, Ben Warren, and thank you to everyone who is joining us uh, on this rather unusual but very special uh, live Q&A with our CEO, Gordon Hollins, who I'm delighted to say is joining me on my left. And Gordon, it's delightful to see you resplendent in Tartan here in Somerset. Yeah, there's... Um, well, good evening to you, um, Spencer. There's a wee story behind this. Richard Gould, who's the, the former CEO here at Somerset, who will be known to many people watching tonight, he told me about the Somerset Tartan it is actually the Somerset Town, which uh, before I started here, he told me about it, and uh, I made it my mission to to get a jacket, get one of the Town jackets, and keep my mum happy for a while because <laughs> she's a patriotic Scot. Fantastic. Um, and and how was it, Andrew's day for you recently? Fantastic. <laughs> it was great. It wasn't celebrated too much in these parts, but uh, celebrated with me. And Josh Day, of course. And Josh, of course, <laughs> absolutely. Um, before I throw my questions on the floor, um, obviously we're here to, to talk a little bit about what's going on with the club and obviously at this time of year, members, supporters, fans from all over the country, not just locally, have got a lot of questions, particularly given what's happened this year and the uncertainty that is surrounding not just sport but life at the moment. So we'll, we'll take a look through at some of those questions. We're also uh, asking uh, you at home who are watching the live stream to... to uh, ask us some questions as well. We have the, uh, the live chat facility open here on our YouTube channel, so if you do have any questions, please do keep them coming in, keep them clean, it's before nine o'clock. Thank you very much indeed. But without further ado, let's start off. Gordon, please bring us up to date with what's happening sort of on and off the field here at the Cooper Associates County Ground. Well, um, probably the question that I've been asked most in my nearly 20 years in cricket now, uh, working in cricket, is what do you do in the winter? And I'm sure you get that that question as well, Spencer, um, quite often. And of course, as you and I know, that there's an enormous amount of work that takes place to ensure that the club is prepared on and off the field for the following season. That work is well underway now, um, as you know, in terms of making sure that the players are fit, players are in training, flat out. One of the things that has really impressed me with the playing side here is the commitment to improvement, whether it be physical or technical. So the guys are in practicing their skills and making sure that they're, um, they're as fit as could be to go into the, the new season. So that's great. That gives everybody a bit of energy. And off the field, um, what we're doing now is working as best we can within the restrictions of Tier 2 status, which is where we are here in Taunton, uh, to try and get back to some form of business normality and generate some income. So on that front, what we're doing is we're opening stragglers and this weekend and Saturday and Sunday and the following weekend, so only weekends at this stage, um, to welcome people back for a festive lunch and they can members can support the club uh, in the way that they, they would like to by booking their own festive lunch uh, for this weekend or the following. Tom Abel, uh, Captain Courageous, is uh, doing a question and a, uh, an answer session this weekend um, around 1.30, so I'd urge any members out there to, to book their lunch and uh, support the club in the way they can. In addition to that, we're obviously open for parking. Uh, the, the shop is still open, um, albeit online. And now we've got the good to go status from Visit Brit, uh, which is the mark that you need to demonstrate that you're COVID safe. And as part of tier two status, we are allowed to host uh, business meetings for up to 100 people uh, in a socially distanced way. Uh, obviously, but we're now making those meetings available. We've got some interest in that. And we're offering, um, says he, going for another sales plug, we're <laughs> offering the first 20 uh, businesses that book 20% off uh, to get business going. So we're really doing all we can to get some back, some normality back in, in the club here. Uh, you touched on the word there, I think, that's, that's key, isn't it? And that is, is safety, isn't it? I mean, it, mm -hmm. is, it is 
vital, isn't it, that we have put in place all these, all these implementations to ensure that everyone is, is, is safe and well whilst they're working here and, and equally as importantly people who are visiting us need to be able to do that and be able to have peace of mind when doing so. Absolutely and we've been on that since, um, since we were operating since April. We were operating for uh, three months with nine people in total running the club and we had measures in place at that very early stage which were very very um, safe and to ensure that we had all the different safety protocols in place to, to keep our people and any guests to the site safe. Absolutely. Obviously, the, the one thing we do have to talk about, and, and we've, we've mentioned it throughout the whole of, of the season, although it was a truncated season, um, and we're talking about it again now, is, is our supporters, our members, and, and how impressed were you, not new to cricket, but potentially new to the Somerset family, if you like, about how many people felt able to to not only donate their membership last season, but have, have renewed already, because I, it's, it's incredible, isn't it, the love that people have for this club? Yeah, it's really st struck home, um, that love for the club and, and the Somerset family that I've been told so much about before I got here. But what's impressed me most is obviously the donations, which actually was just under half a million pounds that were donated this year, which was just invaluable money for the club at a time where the only funding was coming from ECB and HMRC, really. And that was just hugely invaluable, and we'd have been in real trouble without that. So that was hugely appreciated. But also to the people who took the time to write to me or email me and, and say, look, I'm really sorry, I'm not in a position to, to donate my membership. My circumstances don't allow, but here's a small donation, or I will pay my membership when I can. That, that's been fantastic. So it's really important that we thank the people who were kind enough to donate and who could, could afford to do so. And also, we look forward to welcoming back to the family those that weren't in a position to do it. It's important, isn't it, that you know, oh, people are not getting black marked if they, if they didn't donate. Absolutely not. I mean, people have, have not been in a position to, to donate because uh, this, is, this has been an incredibly hard time for, for everyone. We're just overwhelmed by, by the generosity of the, the people that have been able to Yeah, and we've got to get the family back together. That is really the priority. Um, I'm blown away with the loyalty of those that donated, as I said. But we really looked forward to getting the whole family back together in the, in the coming weeks and months. Moving on to, to membership specifically now, am I right in thinking that we're, we're planning for 2021 with the assumption that the season will, will go ahead as planned, but with contingencies in place, should that not be the case? That's right. I mean, we've, we've got some good news of late, haven't we, um, on the uh, broader national picture with um, the vaccine um, now being out, first person vaccine this morning so the ball's rolling on that one which is terrific and of course we've had crowds coming back to sporting events um, and in tier two status where we are as I've said then that will mean that we can have 50% of our capacity up to 2,000 people in this venue and just an aside from that the, the government aren't concerned necessarily about in the stadium because we can control that and we can control social distancing they're more concerned about how people get to and from the venue and what they do on the way and the way back. So we are planning for a full seat, a full house. We're planning for 25% of capacity, 50% of capacity, 100% of capacity. So planning for all scenarios so that we're ready for whatever April brings. Should things not go the way we want them, what would happen to a member's membership if games do end up be, being played behind closed doors like, like they were this year? So the chances of that are receding, I think it's fair to say, and getting less and less. I mean, April seems a long time away, um, four months now until the, 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 the first game. Um, and However, what we've done in our membership is, is guaranteed of giving a COVID assurance to people that in the event of capacities being restricted and people unable to attend, then we would give a proportionate refund to members for any cricket they've lost. Obviously, that refund would be different if the season wasn't there was no access till September, then it would be if people could come in, in May. But we're, we're committed to looking after the family in the way that we did this year. I think you touched on it there. If, if we are allowed uh, crowds in, but there is the social distancing and the limit on numbers, what would, our, what would we be looking at capacity-wise and how are we going to prioritise who is able to come and who isn't? So 2,000 maximum at the moment. Um, as I say, April's a, a long time away. Um, but that said, uh, where we, what we've said is that we will prioritise those who commit to booking within the early bird deadline. So anyone 
who uh, joins before the 31st of January, joins as a member, new or existing, will get priority access to, to matches um, when the season comes in the event of it being uh, restricted capacity. Okay. Um, with regard to the early bird window, we just had a, 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 a question come in on the live chat. Some said podcast, Bright Cider Life. See what they've done there? Right. Bright Cider Life. <laughs> um, just a question regarding the early bird window. Would that be extended potentially if the fixtures haven't been released by the time the, the, the early bird window... We're, we're very confident that the fixtures will be released, if not before Christmas, then into January. And I think once you get beyond January, it's very difficult. I don't envisage that being the case. Excellent. Um, again, we've touched on it earlier. One question that, that, that has cropped up a few times in, 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 the, in the emails that we've received since asking people for their questions is, you know, is it going to be safe for us to, to come to the ground? You've, you've touched on it there before with, with the various following of the policies and, and the industry accreditations that we've received. You know, we are constantly aren't we following the government guidelines which are pretty fluid and changing the goalposts all yeah. the time but we are you know we are going to ensure that if people are allowed this place is as safe as it can be on well there are two things that are really really important here uh, one is to make absolutely sure that the, the venue is as safe as it possibly can be and we're doing a lot of work on that now and into the new year in relation to what that looks like that may change between now and april um, but we will be zealous overzealous in terms of our commitment to that but the other thing that's really important, Spencer, is that it's not just about being safe. Is there's no point people being safe if they're not enjoying it. And there is a risk that we get hung up with just being safe. What we've got to make sure is that, yes, they're safe. That's a given. That has to be a given. But the experience is enjoyable because we realise that people come here for a social reason as well as a cricket reason. And they've got to enjoy coming here. And we're very committed to finding ways that that can be the case. Okay. Um... We've had another question regarding the AGM. When is that going to be held and will that be in person or will it be a, a similar sort of thing to, to what we're doing now over Zoom and, and various other sort of networking? Well, the date for the diaries is the 29th of March. Um, that's a bit later than normal. We've had a COVID year, so we thought it would be appropriate for it to be put back. But also, as, as people will, will know, our financial year has been put back to the end of this month rather than the end of September. And... Um, Therefore, we put it back to the 29th of, of, of March. Now, at the moment, we're not committing to whether it's online. We'd love it to be in person. We'd absolutely love to have people back here in person. But we will only do that if it's safe um, and if we can demonstrate the right duty of care to, to members when they come in the door. But believe you me, nothing would give me more satisfaction than having members back in this venue on the 29th of March. And it would have to be enjoyable as well. <laughs> absolutely. It would be great to see some people. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm a member, I've paid my membership, when can I expect my membership card and, and all the paraphernalia therein to, uh, to arrive? So there's two things there. One is um, the actual membership packs that people may be waiting for with details of membership. They should be landing any time now. They've all left the mailing house, so they should be landing on doormats. If they haven't today, then tomorrow or possibly on, on Thursday. Once people have joined, then we'll, we'll make sure that they have their packs um, before the first game of the season. We may send them out at a later stage than normal, but we will do that at, at the earliest opportunity. But I would advise members to, to just expect them before the first match. They will have them uh, well in advance of the first fixture. Well, with membership renewals and things like that, we deal with, uh, with premium members at the Long Room in the 1875 Club uh, slightly differently. Are we still awaiting approval for, for COVID safe numbers on, on these vet facilities or are they ready to go and is Sam McIntyre the person to, uh, to harass further? Sam is government? definitely, I mean we're in the 1875 lounge here. It's um, very nice, it's very quiet. Tonight. It's, it's quiet. Like biscuits, normal. Um, but it, be, we're planning to have people back here as normal mm -hmm. and if we have to adjust that um, then we will do um, in, in the most appropriate way possible. But as I say, it's so difficult to predict where we are come April. Um, but we will be, a, we'll be flexible and we'll be able to adapt to whatever circumstances are in place at the time. You, you keep mentioning there, obviously, the goalposts moving constantly. From your point of view, how difficult is it to plan for the unplannable almost? Because we, we, every, every week something is different. How, how hard is it to plan for something that is constantly changing? Well, that has been, without doubt, the hardest thing for myself and the management team to do over the last few months. I think there was one week, well there was one week, where we had three government furlough policies within six days. And of course we had to have a plan for each and every one of them. So it was extremely demanding on the team, so very, very challenging to plan. 
because the only thing you can do is, is give your best guess as what the case will be and then give yourself some extra work by having different, different scenarios in place. So challenging. <laughs> um, we mentioned the premium facilities as well. We'll save asking this because this is usually the question that's asked at the AGM at the very end. So we'll, we'll ask that question now. Will the refurbishment and revised seating of the long room balcony be completed in time for the start of the new season? We're delighted to see yes. Um, the programme of works on the long room balcony will start in January and the schedule is that they'll be finished well ahead of the, the first game of the season. We haven't got a lot of spare cash kicking around. That won't surprise anyone to know, but we felt that that was an investment that we had to make. Um, and, and it's, it's one that we're committed to. Excellent. Um, I've just had a question come up on the live chat facility here on, on the YouTube channel. If, if you do have any questions for Gordon, uh, please do keep, keep those coming in. Um, it's a question that, that Daniel Kingdom has asked and, and several people have asked throughout the last few days and want to know the answer. I'm not sure you can give them an answer, but, but when are the fixtures coming out and, and what is the, the slight delay on that? So the challenge with the fixtures this year is the international schedule. Um, because what happens is you have to, on the fixture list, get your international matches in first. They're the big rocks in the jar, as they say, because what happens with that is ground availability is dictated by that. And you've also got two matches um, that are in place for the, for, for the visiting countries and so on. That's been challenging because you've got um, every country in the world is trying to fit, refit sh uh, this year's fixtures into next year. <laughs> However, my understanding is that um, if we don't get fixtures before Christmas, it will be um, at some point in January, um, and that obviously we're all looking forward to that immensely. Absolutely. Um, one on membership, we've, we've mentioned the heroes and the people who have donated and, and things like that, and the early bird price. Just want to clear up um, exactly the, 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 the way that that works. So essentially, with the, the heroes donation and the early bird membership, that, that comes to £50, doesn't it? It's, it's the uh, £30 early bird discount plus the £20 for previous donating and joint members both get that £50. Correct. That correct? correct. So 30 for early birds plus £20 if you're a cricket hero from last year. Uh, and as you say, if you're a joint membership, that's £100 off your, your, your joint fee. Perfect. Um, again, keep the questions coming in on the, uh, on the live chat here. Um, we've had a couple of questions um, regarding... You know the, the red ball cricket, but the holy grail of the yeah. county championship yeah. just keeps eluding us at the yeah. moment. Yeah. We get incredible support for that. How important is it, from your point of view, now as CEO of Somerset, that we we'll maintain and grow and grow that that support for the red ball game, the traditional uh, four-day summer game, if you like? Obviously, we, we've used steps to to include that in in junior memberships and things like that. How important is it that that whilst you know the global excitement and razzmatazz surrounds the, the shorter form of the game, how important is it that we, we maintain and grow that, that core of Red Bull traditional cricket support? Massively important and for a number of reasons. Um, one is personal, I grew up as a Red Bull cricket fan and that's how I fell in love with the game, watching Test cricket and County cricket um, when I was young so it means a lot to me personally. But at the same time it makes commercial sense. Um, any idea that um, white ball cricket, in particular T20 cricket, pays all the bills is, is, is not right. Um, the vast majority of cricket's funding at the moment still comes from the red ball game and in particular test cricket and you obviously need a very competitive county championship to, to feed the test, to test cricket. Um, we're, we're very lucky as a sport to have that as our core offering but also to have two different forms of, of this sport to offer. And other sports that I've spoken to over the years, they'd bite, our hand, bite your hand off to be able to have three different offerings to people. So we're, we will support them all, um, and, but Red Hot Ball Cricket will be at the heart of this club for, for, the, for as long as I can foresee. I think there's people across the county standing up and applauding their laptops at this point, I think. Um, obviously, we, we had to change the way that we we presented cricket in 2020 here at the Cooper Sussex County Ground. Obviously, the people couldn't come to us, so we had to come to them. And um, you know, Ben and the team did an incredible job with, with the live stream. At present, what, how do you see that evolving or developing? And, and will we be live streaming again next year? And potentially, is there the possibility to commercialise that in order to bring in extra revenue? Well, I think that uh, the first thing I should say is, is say a put a big vote of thanks to Trade Nation who provided sponsorship this year, which allowed us to, to carry out the live streaming and put that into people's living rooms during pretty challenging, dark times, if you like. So that's the first thing. And under the, the terrific 
work that um, Ben Warren and, and Dan Cooper in particular have led around the live stream. We are now looking at the success, every cloud has a silver lining, so you had this really challenging summer, but actually something fantastic has emerged here, which is an appetite for live stream. We are looking at how that can be enhanced further. It will be challenging with the financials that we have in place, but we are very committed to ensuring that we have a really compelling live stream um, offer uh, that's available. And uh, we'll, we'll release further news as the season gets closer on, on what that looks like. Okay. How impressed were you by, by the standard of that? I mean, I'm, I'm going to be slightly biased because I, I got to be in it, but it, it, it yeah, was great, yeah. wasn't it? To be able, for us to be able to bring enjoyment to the people who so desperately wanted to be here was, was something very special, I think. What was, what was so pleasing is, and I think I, I wasn't alone amongst the team here, um, when you know, the summer was challenging, it was tough um, on people uh, on a, a number of different levels. But what the live streaming did was, was got us feedback from our support base, and members in particular, that was so positive. And I must have got every day for about a month a message of how fantastic is this, it's much better than it was. That was really uplifting um, for everyone here. So I think we can be well proud of that. I think we're one of the, the, the leaders in this area across the country. A number of chief execs across the country contacted me and said, what did you do about this, what did you do about that, which is always a good sign. Um, it's not stealing, we'll, it's sharing it's best practice. It's sharing best practice, <laughs> and, and what our job now is to take it to another level. Perfect. Um, we've had a, a, a question come in uh, from Alison uh, Barter on, on the live stream again. Um, with regards to the, the points deduction, do we know if that's going to be carried over, whether that's going to be less, more, the same, yeah. where, where do we currently stand? Well, we hope to have an announcement on that uh, very shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been in discussions with the ECB um, in recent days, actually, and, and think we've come to a solution which is acceptable to both parties. And um, we look forward to making an announcement on that very shortly. Okay. Um, do we know if the Almanac will be available this season? It will be. Um, Richard Walsh is working hard on that right now. Um, Gordon Baird, the new chair, and I did an interview for, with him last week, and I know that he's got all sorts of content that's being lined up there, so the Almanac definitely is underway. Excellent. Um, obviously, um, the 2020 season ended up looking very different than, than how it would have done. One of the, the elements of the 2020 season, which would have been happening, uh, not necessarily here, but would have been happening, obviously, was, was the 100. Uh, several of our players and coaches and, and support staff were we're going to be lining up to, to be involved with the various uh, regional teams yep. within that competition. Um, it seems to be a bit more. My people are either for it or against it. How, where do we stand as a club with regard to the 100 moving forward into 2021 and beyond? Yeah, well, look, I mean, I think that when you take away the emotion of the 100 itself and you peel back to why is this happening, um, very few people would argue behind the motivation. Um, for it. So the motivation of the 100 is to widen the appeal of cricket um, to, so that people who perhaps aren't inspired by it now do become inspired and do become involved in the game, whether that's as a, as a, as a boy or a girl or a man or a woman or a grounds, grounds, grounds man or woman or a, an umpire or an official. So the actual motive to actually engage communities across the country to make cricket a game for everyone, very few people argue with that objective. Obviously the 100 itself, as you say, is a bit marmite. Some people think that's a great solution and other people most definitely don't, particularly down in this next of the woods. Where I am as Chief Executive of the club is, look, there is no point in us swimming against the tide here. The 100 is happening. Um, it will happen in the coming summer. And I know people, some people won't like that, but it's going to happen. And therefore my job is to ensure that Somerset County Cricket Club benefit and cricket in South West benefits from the 100 whether it be by more spectators, whether it be more cricketers coming through the system, making the clubs healthier and getting more people who want to participate in the game, more officials and all the rest of it. We've got to make sure that we benefit because there's no point in doing anything otherwise. It's going to happen. We've had a, a question here, which is probably more of a, a cricket board one, but I guess cricket's traditionally potentially stereotyped as being um, a game for the, for the upper class and, and mm -hmm. it's played in, in in the more expensive and, and salubrious schools around here, but I think it's fairly safe to say that, you know, I personally know from the work that I've done with the cricket board, with, with running the community engagement, yeah. but a, a huge amount is done in, in, in all schools throughout the region, regardless of, you know, the financial status of the school, where it's based and things like that. Is, is that evidence that you've seen since you've been here? Well, I think the first thing to say is I, I went to a state school 
um, in central Scotland and I was the only cricketer in the school. Mm. So I know absolutely the point that's being made, mm. um, which is it's really important to make cricket a game for everyone and widen the appeal of it. The cricket board, under the leadership of Andy Fairbairn, already do some fantastic work um, in state schools across the, uh, across the county. And I know that's replicated by our friends in Devon and Cornwall and Dorset, who do equally good work. We can always do more. And I think it really is important that we, that we, we walk the talk on that and make sure that we take cricket as an offering um, into all sorts of communities, uh, regardless of background, ethnicity, gender, and, and really make cricket a game for everyone. So that will be something that's high in my agenda, and I look forward to working with people on that project. Have you been pleasantly surprised by, by the amount of community engagement work that the, the players have, have, have been happy to undertake? Obviously, you know, we were fortunate enough to, to win an ECB award last year. The players you know, came to us wanting to make calls during the initial lockdown Just period. Um, I know about half the first team were involved in some, some Zoom calls with the Super Ones um, over the course of, of, of last week. Have you been impressed with, with how, in particular, Tom Abel has led from the front and, and how open to, to engaging with the community and, and giving benefit and happiness to other people the players in the squad have been? I think it's been really, really pleasing for me and, and the culture of the cricket department, as it were, under Andy Hurry's leadership is, is very, very, very good. It's very strong and believe me, every club doesn't have this, but we've got a group of players who enjoy um, doing their bit in the community and you mentioned the make a call campaign that we did during lockdown one and uh, i love the story where marcus stroscopic phoned someone and he wouldn't believe that it was marcus and <laughs> probably still doesn't to this day and that was fantastic because it genuinely enriched people's lives that whole process so i'm delighted that the players are genuinely part of this club and they don't sit in a bubble um, somewhere else they're very much part of what we do here I did speak to a gentleman who was very disappointed because his friend had been phoned by Marcus Truscothic and <laughs> phoned by me. He was not happy, but never mind. Um, I think we've covered off a, a, most of the, the, the things that have, that have been coming up there. Um, we've seen sort of football clubs potentially selling their ground to, tr to try and raise mm. extra revenue. I hear gasps coming through cyberspace. Mm. Any, any plans to sell the Cooper Associates County Graph? Okay, I think you only sell the crown jewels when you absolutely have to. Um, and that would certainly be selling this venue would be um, the last res possible resort and you'd have to be in all sorts of a financial mess to do that. Um, touch wood, we're not in that place, uh, so that's not something that I've spent any time thinking about at all. Fantastic. Well, for the time being, Gordon, that, that sort of covers off uh, the questions we've had emailed in and also the questions that have been coming um, via the, the live stream here on YouTube. However, we did have a, a number of questions uh, that were a, on a cricket-based nature, but it would be slightly unfair to throw those at you. Um, so we caught up with uh, the person who was probably best suited to answer those questions earlier today. Uh, we sat down with Andy Hurry to discuss some of the questions that, that you have been asking throughout the course of the last few days. Well, thank you for joining us, Andy Hurry, Somerset Director of Cricket. We've had a few questions in uh, from our, our members and supporters on the cricket front. Who better to answer those than, of course, yourself? The big one on everyone's lips at the moment is, are there plans to bring in potentially another overseas player? It's uh, a result, I think, of the impact of the pandemic. It's quite a difficult and challenging question to answer at this time. Um, at the moment, we still haven't got uh, visibility on the fixtures for next season. Um, hopefully we're going to get an update on that sooner rather than later. We're also unclear around the international playing schedule at the moment. And understandably, there's a lot of uncertainty around what fixtures international teams are going to be playing. So understanding which players are available at the moment is also unclear. Um, and I think it's important for us as a club to also be realistic in the financial landscape and the visibility we have at this stage. So we're very open to exploring. And we are exploring and getting a better understanding of who's playing when and uh, what players might be available. But I have to sense check you know, what our financial position is um, before making a final decision around that. Just on overseas players, we have recruited Merchant de Langer, uh, who settled in really, really well. I'm really pleased um, of how he's settled in. And he's definitely adding value to the environment already, which is really exciting. And we've also got a lot of uh, belief in the talent and the quality we have in the squad currently. So whatever the final outcome is going to be, um, I think we're in a really good position as a club. 
Okay. We also had a question about the, the bowling coach. We know that uh, Stuart Vance has gone on to uh, gone on to, to work with Ireland, uh, so there is a vacancy there. How is the recruitment process going, and can we expect an imminent announcement? It's gone really, really well. Uh, we had over 20 uh, quality applications uh, with a varying degree of experience. Um, ranging from international experience right the way through to people who are very aspirational and got a lot of potential moving forward. We went through a very uh, robust process to make sure we shortlisted the appropriate candidates that fitted our specific needs and uh, we started uh, conducting interviews uh, this week and we hope to be in a position where um, we can conclude that process uh, and for the successful candidate to commence employment with us at some stage in the new year. Hopefully as soon as possible when we return in early January. So watch this space. Finally, this is I guess a particularly important topic given what's happened throughout the world this year and particularly what we've seen in the news this weekend. What, what are the club doing to help protect the mental health of the players and staff at the moment? Obviously with the news that Tom Banton is, is coming home early from the Big Bash. I think one of the great strengths of us as a, uh, as a club is that uh, we are a very tight-knit unit. Um, there's a lot of invested interest in everybody that works here. Um, and I think we've got to be very, very grateful um, in the fact that we've got the opportunity to return to train. It gives people real purpose um, and a real meaning to what they do. And, you know, players have returned to training since early November and, uh, you know, they've really thrown themselves into it because they've got something to work towards. They're working around each other collectively. You know, we put some really strong protocols and measures in place to protect them to ensure that they are safe. Uh, they've had some really good um, education around things they can and can't do and understanding the consequences if, if things were to be done inappropriately. So we're in a really strong position in the fact that we are training, people have got purpose, you know, we're a tight-knit group and, and we're communicating with players on a daily and staff uh, on a daily basis. So we've got good insight into how people are travelling and where, what their current position is. Regarding uh, Tom, you know, it's been a very difficult and challenging time for him. Um, he hasn't played that much cricket and he's been involved in a lot of um, very secure uh, environments and been isolated. And, you know, I caught up with him on the phone. I've been in discussions with, with him and his management team. Um, and he's also been in communication with Brisbane Heat. And with the outlook of looking forward to more isolation, quarantine in Australia, it was deemed that the best uh, appropriate decision for him was to not go to the Big Bash. And actually the best, for him, best thing for him right now is coming home, spending some time with his family, uh, which is really important to him. Um, and for us to continue to monitor him and check in with him on a, on a daily and a weekly basis. And we're in a position where if he requires any additional support, we've got support internally, but we can also reach out and get some expertise from either the ECB or PCA uh, and other external expertise sources um, to put any measures in place that uh, he may require. But at this stage, he's really looking forward to coming back. Um, looking forward to spending some time with his family. We'll keep touching base with him and uh, he's really excited about returning to training in the new year with the squad. Yeah, we're all passionate, aren't we, about, about this game that we're involved in, but I think Jason put it perfectly when we were speaking to him about Tom Banton earlier in the week when he said, you know, the most important piece in this jigsaw is Tom Banton. Yeah, without doubt. And uh, Tom Banton, all the other players, all the other staff, everyone else here that works at the club, What's most important is that uh, we create a safe environment, we're continually checking in on people to see how they're travelling and we're adapting what we're doing depending on what situation in each individual finds themselves. People are the most important things and we've seen some really good evidence and uh, examples from the ECB this week and decisions that have been being, being made uh, in South Africa. So that's the most important thing for us to making sure everyone is safe, healthy and uh, they're enjoying being at work and if there's a situation that arises that we've got the appropriate support in place. Perfect. Well, Andy Harry, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Well, brilliant. Thank you very much for that, uh, Sarge and Spence and Gordon. Absolutely great insight to, uh, to all things at the club. Um, now, we're going to try something a little bit different this evening. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to um, attempt to go live from, from South Africa and, and catch up with, with Marcus Truscothic, who's 
who's obviously been uh, over there for the last couple of weeks uh, in, a, in a very interrupted um, tour. So uh, I'm pleased to say that, that, that at the moment Trez joins us live, um, so we're going to pop, pop to him. Um, and Spencer Bishop and I have swapped rooms, so uh, uh, here we go. We're going to go back to uh, Spencer Bishop, who's uh, with Marcus Truscothic. Spence. Uh, well, I'm delighted to say that I am joined, and I've walked quite literally 10 yards into a different room, and I am delighted to say that I am joined by the one and only, the legend that is, Marcus Truscothic. Marcus Truscothic, where are you in the world, sir? Hello, Spencer. I am. And, you know, I'm still in Cape Town at the moment, uh, in the hotel, uh, only a couple of days now till we come back. So it's been a, a good few weeks, really. Um, it, it's been an interesting tour, let's put it that way. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that. I know that you can't say too much, obviously. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in the not too distant future. But um, let's talk a little bit about the season 2020. It's been a strange one for everyone, but, but particularly for yourself. How was it that first year of, of, of not strapping the pads on and, and being on the right side of the white line? Well, firstly, we know it was very different, wasn't it? It was uh, unique to what we've uh, experienced in the past before. Um, but the transition from playing into coaching was enjoyable and, um, you know, everything that I wanted it to be, really. Um, the, the best thing about it all, and I still don't to this, to this day, sort of miss the games or playing in, in the slightest. I, I, I've thoroughly thrown myself into coaching and the enjoyable part of, of doing that job um, and found new things that um, make me want to be better every day uh, so I can keep driving forward and keep making myself better at what I do to become a better coach. So um, gone are the days of um, thinking about getting the pads on and, and getting out there and trying to do that job. Um, I'm thoroughly enjoying the, the coaching side of things. Was there a worry that you, you potentially wouldn't enjoy the coaching as, as much as the playing? So, so you must be delighted that that, that transition has come so smoothly. Uh, the, the biggest worry was that I'd, I'd still miss playing the game. Uh, I think I, I thought I'd always enjoy coaching and get into that. But I still thought I'd have that um, lingering feeling of uh, wanting to get out there and have a bat and, and still be playing. But... Uh, the best bit about it now is watching the lads go out to the field because then I, that totally reminds me that I've had enough and I don't want to do this all over again. But um, you know, the, the stresses and strains are completely different. You know, when you're away from from playing the game um, into where I am now, it's a completely different process. You, you're a lot more relaxed um, and a lot more chilled out. Now that may change in time, where you know, when eventually I become head coach somewhere. Um, but right now, when you're sort of doing the coach's role that I am, it, it's. Uh, it's good and, and very enjoyable. Obviously, the, the beauty is that you, you get to still do it at the county that you, you care so much about. Of course, see, I, and I'm blessed for that, really. The fact that I've gone straight from playing into coaching with the club as well. Um, you know, already having a relationship forged with a number of the younger players and senior players that you do uh, helps that, you know, that, that building of relationships. Um, but there are challenges that come with it also because there's that familiarity that with people, um, they've seen you at your worst, they've seen you at your best. Um, you know, some things I'd quite like them to forget about what I was like as a player sometimes. But, um, uh, you know, there's, you know, it's, it's an interesting way that you, you have to try and change things. And then coming into this environment, you know, it's completely different, you know, trying to build relationships here, working with different talent from across the country um, and seeing how the best go about things. We're going to open it up to questions from the floor as well. So if you do have any questions for the legend that is Marcus Truscothic, please do uh, please do pop them on the the YouTube live chat facility. Again, please do. Be, be kind. Be kind to me. I don't be want kind. nothing too dodgy. I can't answer. <laughs> we'll, we'll try and keep it reasonably clean, Marcus. Um, how impressed were you by by the boys last year? Obviously, it was it was a difficult season for everyone. We were incredibly fortunate to be in a position to be able to do what we love so much this summer, although it was slightly truncated and, and slightly different to, to what we're used to. How impressed were you with how the boys not only adapted to that, but put in the performances on the pitch? We saw the rise of some great young players and once again, so close to just claiming that, just missing out we did again on that, that elusive Red Bull trophy. Yeah, we're, we're very close and we're, we're gaining ever closer, I think, with the, you know, the production of what the team is, is doing. Our bowling attack is probably the best in the country. Um, and, and sort of puts us into that position. Um, you know, there, there are a few er other areas I think we can still improve on and, and get better. But 
um, as a general plan, I think we're, you know, our Red Bull cricket is very, very promising. Um, you know, we, we do a lot of the things that other teams don't do. And I think we're very good um, at keep pushing forward when, when results don't look like they're going to happen. But, you know, it was a different season. You know, the, the whole format of the competition for a start was, was completely different. Um, but good to see some of the youngsters getting opportunities and really sort of breaking into the team. And then a couple of, you know, real sort of landmark sort of times, you know, Eddie Byram getting his first hundred at Laws was a quite a special moment for, you know, for all the team because the, the, the jubilation of watching Eddie go through the process and trying to understand his game and then get his hundred in such a big game at uh, the home of cricket was a, was a great moment for, for the team to experience. Tom Lamanby, another breakthrough season where we saw so much um, of what he was, was trying to do. Um, and it keeps growing, doesn't it? Sorry, my, my, my camera's just falling down. Let me just pop you up. There you go. There we go. <laughs> um, but, it, but it leaves us other areas to do. Like our white ball cricket uh, would probably be fair to say that there's a, it's room for improvement on, on what we're trying to achieve there. Uh, moving on to, to the international scene now, tell us a little bit about, about what, you've been, what you've been up to in South Africa. Yeah, good. So I, I've been over with the, the England team. Um, you know, we came over three... About three and a half weeks ago now, um, straight over to Cape Town, um, hoping to play a T20 um, match, a three match series and a three match series in the 50 over competition as well. But uh, the T20s went great, um, very, very dominant uh, with the bats in particular. You know, they've been absolutely brilliant uh, how they've approached it and how they've performed um, with some real standout performers. Um, David Milan was absolutely brilliant to the way that he struck it in, in every game that they played. Um, and obviously then coming out of that 3-0, we were really uh, excited about going into the 50-over format. But obviously things have sort of put pay to that and uh, made it quite tough. Uh, obviously, we, you know, you can't say too much and we don't want, wouldn't want to put you in that, that difficult position. But um, what is the mood in the camp at the moment? What, what, what's going on? How is everybody? I mean, that's the main thing. Yeah, everyone's fine. Um, you know, and it, all back to normal. We're all looking forward, I think, to getting back on the plane home it, you know it's been a challenging sort of period and any time that you go through it as a team and you experience these sort of um tough moments when you're not really expecting them and not something that you, you're used to dealing with as players you know as players and coaching staff you're used to the stress and strains of playing cricket the highs and lows of what goes on but when other things sort of step in and make it a challenge it, it's quite demanding and mentally draining for the for the everyone around so um, but everyone's good everyone's in good spirits um, as, but as I say, I think everybody's looking forward to a bit of a, a bit of time off at home after, especially the guys that have come from England bubble, went straight to IPL bubble, and then straight here after that. They've been away from a long, uh, a long period of time. How, how stressful is it being involved in that bubble? Obviously, part of the beauty of touring is getting out and about, and mixing with with new people and new cultures, and and experiencing new countries and things like that. How difficult has it been? For, for people who, firstly, people who are used to doing that on tour, not being able to do that, and people who are, who are touring for maybe the first or second time, you know, now having mm. to get used to this new situation. How difficult has that been to cope with? Yeah, I, I think that there could be worse places. You know, like we're, in, uh, we're in Cape Town, we're in a lovely hotel, right at the bottom of Table Mountain. You know, what more do you want, you know? And, uh, you know, you're building up some good cricket um, as it is. But like I said, I think it's more demanding and more pressurised situation for the players because, they have the, the performance anxieties and everything and pressures that go with it. So trying to get them, help them to relax and, and get away from the cricket in between times it, it is quite, it's quite tough. Um, and, you know, I think that the management themselves can, um, you know, sort of relax themselves in their own different ways, really, and, and sort of get around it uh, as you do. But uh, I, I had a taste of bubble life when we were in the summer, when we down in Ireland, down at the Rose Bowl uh, for, for three weeks, um, very similar to here. Um, but again, good hotel, good ground facilities, everything that you wanted it to be. But it's just, um, it's just different. You know, you can't go to restaurants. You, you're not leaving the hotel once you've come back from practice. It's just, uh, you just got to get your head around it. And I think once you've made that mental shift into how it all operates, how it all works, where you spend your time, how much time you spend in the gym, um, you, you get used to it. And it's uh, quite a normal way after that. 
obviously you know you've done a huge amount of work for 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 mental health charities and with the pca and things like that obviously mental health is a, is a hugely prevalent su uh, subject at the moment we've seen this week news that tom banton has elected to to not head to the big bash and and come home from his point of view you know just because you know him as well you know probably as well as anyone is is that the right decision for him uh well only he knows that and i, and I we didn't try and advise him to say, yes, you should go. No, you should stay at home. Um, the only thing you can say is, is well, more, enough, more importantly, you sit there and listen to what his fears are and how he's feeling. Um, and then you, you can just reassure him to say, okay, look, whatever your decision is and whatever you think is the right decision, we'll support you in whatever way we can do. Um, because there's no point in me trying to dictate and tell him what to do. You because only he knows how he's feeling but um he's okay he's, he's absolutely fine I, I think um he's come over on this trip as a reserve so it's quite a tough sort of position to be in where you know if somebody gets injured then he'll be brought into a squad but otherwise he's on the slightly on the periphery because he's not in the current squad for each for each uh competition they were going to play um but he's okay absolutely i think he's looking forward to a bit of time at home uh, again, he's been on the road a long period of time from the summer then to IPL and then here. So I think it'll do him, it'll do him really good to have a little bit of a rest at home over Christmas and then join boy back up with the Somerset team in early January. It'll be a great idea. Obviously, Tom's out there. Is it, has it been easier or more difficult working with, with some of the Somerset boys at international level because you, you know them so well? Uh, it's easier, definitely, because... Uh, you know more about them. You you understand, you know, what, what makes them tick a bit easier. Um, you already have that relationship where we've built up about our, you know, me understanding what they're doing with their batting um, and what they do in their game. Um, so I can you, you can transfer those skills quite quickly um, and it's easier to switch into sort of relationship time with those guys. But it's still the same with, with, with the England guys. You pick it up pretty quickly. Already you, you build... Um, relationships back in the summer and you sort of bring them over here and it can it carries on so um it, it's been good fun um, and what are the next moves for marcus Triscothic? what are your immediate plans well i'm going to go back out through there uh wander back down to my room um and go to bed and then uh back on the flight on thursday back home uh and back into work on monday so looking forward to you know to back working with the somerset boys and uh hopefully transferring a few skills that, uh, that I've picked up from here. Perfect. Just before we go, um, obviously there's a, a lot of members who've been watching online. I've got a, a quick message for, for the guys who have been, been watching online and have, have supported us so well from afar all season. Well, thank you, first and foremost. I think um, I'm sure it's been tough, you know, uh, for everybody not being able to get and, and see live cricket. I'm sure you've been watching on the stream, but uh, stick with it. You know, from what the, the signs of the, the vaccine coming through, hopefully today we're, we're getting somewhere and we're hopefully when we get back to April time next summer and the sun comes back out, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you all back at the county ground. Well, well, let's hope so. I think, uh, think you speak for all of us with those sentiments, Marcus. Uh, first of all, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Have a safe journey back to England. And if no we don't no catch... questions? No, well, no, clearly not. I've, I've, I've done some of them. I've inter I've inter Okay slipped them in for you but um if we don't oh, speak bro. before have a have a great christmas slash birthday and uh have a safe journey back thank you very much Cheers, everyone thank you very much for your time at uh, somerset legend of course marcus at triscothic um there's still more to come on this special members q a event it is now time to take a look at our new membership and ticket booking system and to bring you all the very latest you need to know with regard to that is our operations director sarah trunks Thank you, Spencer, and good evening to everyone who's joining us online this evening live or to those who are joining us on demand at a time convenient to you. It's great to have you on board and I hope you are enjoying this evening and learning more about our 2021 membership packages. Thank you also for all your support over the course of this turbulent year. I know it's been said many times before, but we really do appreciate all that everyone has done for us this year in terms of donations, supporting us on the live stream, sending us messages, letters. It really has been fantastic the amount of support that we've received and we cannot thank you enough it very much is appreciated by everyone involved here at Somerset County Cricket Club and I do hope you and your loved ones are staying safe and well over this period and continue to stay safe and well over the next few months as well. Covid obviously brings social distancing which has meant that the office has remained closed which does unfortunately mean that the online system perhaps is more important than before so we thought this evening was a 
prime opportunity to walk you through that online journey just to help you buy membership in the meanwhile. Before I go on to that though, I just thought I'd reiterate some of the important information which perhaps has already been mentioned before. Uh, membership prices have been frozen at 2020 levels. 2020 members who donated their fees have had their seats held under offers until Wednesday, January the 20th. Also, those members can claim an additional £20 discount on the early bird renewal rate, £50 on the full price if purchasing before Sunday, January the 31st. Also, the early bird discount deadline does end on Monday, February the 1st. In terms of methods to pay, so your renewal packs have been sent to all 2020 members regardless of the revised option you decided to take this summer and they are due to land with you over the course of this week. We have had confirmation from the mailing house that they did all leave towards the end of last week so they are very much with Royal Mail and should be dropping through your doors in the next couple of days. Within those packs there are some pre-filled application forms and you may return those to us here at the ground along with either a cheque or a post-dated cheque, your debit or credit card details and there's also the free monthly direct debit option and if you do wish to choose that option please do fill in and return the enclosed direct debit mandate rather than sending us your card details. Also as we'll go on to tonight you can buy online so the online system is open 24-7 and this guide will be available to you both as we go through the session tonight but also it will be available to download on our website should you need it for further guidance and you can also call us we're on 01823 425 301 and the phone lines are open Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So as we launch into the online system, we'll start with the club membership and Somerset Associate memberships. So these two categories are for ground entry only. So it's a slightly different uh, buying mechanism for that. So if you start by launching onto our membership page, and it takes you through to the ticket system, you should see this page, it should be quite familiar to you, where you've got 2021 membership, you just simply hit the buy button. That will then take you through to this page here. Now this one is very much aimed at those who will be selecting their own seats, which will come on to under the club one and one day memberships and one day memberships. But as a club member, you do not need to select a seat. So there is a yellow box at the top of your screen there, and it does say click here to purchase a club or Somerset Associate membership. So if you do click on that one, that will then take you through to this page, which might be one that's more familiar to you. So this allows you to choose the best available option. And as a club or Somerset Associate member, you need to select ground entry, followed by the membership category. If you then pop in your quantity and hit continue. As you move through the system, it then takes you into your shopping basket. So here you can check that your product is correct, check that the pricing is correct. And then if you don't need to add any further memberships, you can hit continue. If you do wish to go back or add any further memberships, you can hit continue shopping. Once you've hit continue, it does take you through to the login page. And this, I believe, is where we've had some stumbling blocks before. Um, you do need to have a, an online account set up with us already. Um, so if you're unsure if you do or don't, please do contact us in advance and we can check that for you. Uh, if you do have an account set up, please pop in your username. It's normally the email address that you use to register with and your password. If you don't have an account just yet, please do hit create a new account and that will take you through the process of uploading your personal details. If you cannot remember your password, there is a click forgot your password link there and that will then send you a password in a separate email for you to enter and reset to one that is then personal to you. But for the purposes of this demo tonight, we're going to presume we know our login details. So we've popped in our username and our password and we're logging into the system. It will then bring up this page, and this is very much aimed at those who are buying membership for someone else as a, as a gift, or also if they're buying more than one membership. So if that is the case, this question is purely asking you to provide the names of the alternative members. This will just ensure we can print the right names on the right membership cards. If you do have information to add in here, please add it into the box just there. There is a plus arrow to the right, so again, you can add more than one name if you're buying more than one membership. And then once complete, or if you don't have any details to pop in here, just hit continue. This then takes us through to the delivery page. So it's an opportunity for you to check that all the details are correct. So it's listing the billing customer, the billing address, your email address, and then a delivery method. There are no charges with regards to membership, so you just need to pop membership post. And as you can see, no charge there, and hit continue. This then takes you through to one of the final pages. So this is the payment page. 
So again, it's the last opportunity for you to check that your details are all present and correct. Select your payment method, and depending on which one that is, it will then ask you to insert those details. And then once you've completed your payment, you will receive an email from the ticket system as a receipt. Moving on to one day membership and club and one day membership, one of the new initiatives for 2020 going into 2021 is an upgrade to our ticket system and this is following a lot of feedback from our members and supporters around the facility to be able to pick your own seats. So we're delighted to say that over the course of the summer that upgrade has been applied to our ticket system and you can now go in and do that. So if I just walk you through that journey first of all. So it's a similar starting point to the previous. This will be the landing page that you'll come on to and you just click buy membership. As it takes you through, this will then be the page that you see. So this is a ground map and it's an interactive ground map. So you can see the areas that are highlighted. We've got stands by categories and you can click onto those stands to choose your seat. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm looking to purchase a seat in one of my personal favourite stands, the river stand. And once you click on that section, it then opens up the block and you can see the seats. So the pale blue dots have been sold already or are on hold in the back office and then the dark blue dots are those that are available for you to purchase. If you hover over the dots it will give you the row and seat information and then once you're happy with the seat that you've chosen please do click on that one and it will take you through to book. Once you've clicked on it it will list the available categories of membership. So again for the purposes of this demo I've chosen club and one day membership. So again if you just pick that option it will then hold that seat under that membership type for you. So again, this is just an opportunity for you to make sure that you're happy with your seat selection, it's picked up the right membership type, and then you can add that one to your order. If for whatever reason you wish to change your mind, you can just hit the cross, and that will take you back to the stand so you can select an alternative seat or an alternative section. This is then a similar process to what we've been through before. Once you've added it to your order, it goes into your basket, and again, you can then continue to check out or you can go back to continue shopping. Again, we're back at the login to your account. So again, for the purposes of this demo, we have logged straight into the system. The question field has come up once again. So if you do have additional information to add in here, please do so. Regardless, if not, or if you do, you then hit continue. This will then again take you through to the delivery details. It's just a quick check through of that everything is present and correct and you just select your delivery method. It then takes us through to the payment method and once again you pop your details in there and then you can go through to complete your purchase. There is an alternative way that you can also book one day and club and one day memberships. If you do, do not wish to pick a seat, you're happy to take best available, then that is the, the secondary option that's available to you. Again, it's a similar process first of all, but rather than going to select your own seat, you just need to hit this best available button, which is to the right, and that will then take you through to the previous screen that we've had before. So again, here you can check what category you wish to have, and you can choose what stand you wish to sit in, um, or you can let the system choose for you. So if you're just happy to have a category A seat and say choose for me, it will pick the best available seat within that section. And for the purposes of best available, it will pick from front to back um, in terms of the stand. So it will always pick you towards the front of the stand if it's got availability. Once you're happy that you've picked up your membership category, again, you hit continue. And that takes you through to the checkout page. Again, we're logging into the system. We're answering the question if we need to fill in that field. We're checking off our delivery information. And we're going to the billing page. Now this year, as I mentioned uh, when we first started this presentation, we have got those who donated in 2020 of having seats held for this season. So there is now a mechanism that you can still renew those seats online if you do wish. They have all been held for you under offers and you can access those through your online account if you wish. So to do that, you would log into the account. So when you land on our ticket page, you'll see there's a My Account tab. So if you click on that one, it will essentially take you to this login page. So once you've added your details and you've logged into the system, you'll see this page. And this is your account home page. As you can see, it lists your recent transactions. Within here, you can also update your personal information, check your preferences, um, check your order history, and um, whatnot. It's also got offers here down the left-hand side. 
and this is where your seat has been preloaded for renewal. Once you go into that section, it will show what's available in terms of an offer, and you can either decline it, which will then release that seat back into the system for general sale, or you can go through and add it to order and then complete the payment as per the previous steps that we've already gone through. Just in closing, if you do, there are some further key information that we can share with you. If you do have multiple login attempts, so if you're unsure of your password and you have tried a few different passwords to log in, the system will lock you out after six failed attempts. This is purely for security purposes to make sure there's no data um, issues going on there. So if that does happen, it will come up saying that your account is locked and you will then need to contact the main office for us to unlock your account. You can do that either by phone or by email and we can reset that one for you. The online system also operates under a 3D security authentication. So the address that you enter must match the address your card is registered to when completing your checkout. If you are purchasing multiple memberships or buying membership as a gift, please do ensure you provide their names and details at the time of purchase. This will just ensure that when we come to printing membership cards, we are putting the right names on the right cards. And also, if you are buying a junior membership, please enter the name and date of birth of the junior member. Again, they must be born after the 1st of April 2003 in order to qualify for junior membership. If you have any questions or any issues, then please do contact the office. We are available, so we are on inquiries at somersetcountycc.co.uk or we're always available by phone as well on 01823 425 301. And that's it for this very quick whiz through of the ticket system. I hope that all made sense, but if you do have any questions or queries, please do come back to us. And as I've said, we will make sure this presentation and PDF document is available to download, so you can also review it at your leisure too. Thank you for listening. Hi, and thank you to everyone for tuning in this evening and watching the programme. I hope it helped warm up what's otherwise a very cold winter's evening. I hope you enjoyed being with us tonight. It just leaves it to me to reiterate my sincere thanks on behalf of everyone here at Somerset County Cricket Club for the incredible support that's been given to us this year by our members and, of course, our supporters. Who would have thought that we could receive such support and without having anyone um, in the ground. The players and the staff all look forward to welcoming you back to your second home um, come April. We can't wait for that day to come and in the meantime it just leaves me to wish you all um, a very Merry Christmas and a safe, healthy and happy 2021. Thank you very much indeed.